your life. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Zapali here, healing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois. And I am a board counsel and chief distribution officer of PHP Agency. And I am one of the hosts here of the PHP podcast, alongside my co-host, fellow field advisory board member, Marlene Gaetan. So Marlene, please help us understand and who are we bringing on the podcast today? Welcome to podcast number eight. Today we have the one and only Chris Phelps. Well, I'm fi- I'm fired about Chris Phelps because uh, uh, Marlene, his background uh, comes from a uh, background which is probably typical of somebody would you would think would come from LA, from California. So Marlene, can you give a brief background of Chris Philp? Chris Phelps, um, here's a fun fact about Chris Phelps, by the way. You know, he knows how to build a computer from scratch, by the way. His wife shared that with me. I thought that was pretty cool. That's That's gotta be a unique talent here in PHP. The only other person I think might be able to do that might be Hector Del Toro, but Chris Phelps comes from a background in movie production and he was a high ranking executive there. And he actually got promoted to take the business to go online. So he has a background in e-commerce. Uh, he was making a multiple six figure income and he left that to join PHP. He's now a president's council, has a national business, one of the fastest growing organizations. And he's actually also our newest half a million dollar earner here in PHP. You know, the interesting thing about Chris, he, uh, he's t- he told us that uh, he used to make $150,000 is a high ranking movie exec, but uh, man, did they own him with that type of salary? So, we'd like to welcome to the PHP co- podcast episode eight, Chris Phil from San Diego. What's going on, Chris? Good morning, guys. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Glad to be with you guys here today. It is beautiful here in San Diego this morning. We call this San Diego sleeping weather. The overcast is here. It'll be here till about midday. And that's where people, you know, have to use the blinds in the morning. So San Diegans are used to that. It's our built-in sleeping weather, built-in blinds. So happy to be with you guys here this morning. You know, Chris, you know, I've got some uh, pers- personal love for San Diego. That's where I went to boot camp when I was in the Marine Corps, San- MCRD San Diego. But uh, for some reason, I didn't have a chance to even notice the weather, man. So, <laughs> 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 But you're right, 100%. Every time I come out there as a civilian, is an entrepreneur building business. I'm like wondering, how do people get anything done in San Diego? It's always a, a perfect, uh, beautiful weather out there, man. So, uh, Chris, you know, a, a lot of times people uh, uh, have an interesting story about how they got involved in the insurance industry. Is because not everybody goes to college and says one day, I'm going to be an insurance agent. Mom, dad, I'm going to build an insurance agency. So, Chris, share us a little bit about your story about how you got involved in the insurance industry. Yeah, Matt, I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, when you think back to it and you go, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a lawyer, I want to be an astronaut, I want to be a police officer, firefighter, you can run down that list all day long and you'll never find, oh, I'm going to be in the insurance industry. Nobody ever puts that at the top of the list. And when uh, people hear my story and they understand my background, they think that was a motivator for me to get into the life insurance industry. But in reality, it never, it really never connected for me in that respect. But now looking back at it, it's kind of funny how things and events that happen in your life, sometimes they may subconsciously influence the decisions or directions you go in. Um, You know, for me, I watched my mom and my dad work what many Americans still perceive to be the guaranteed success system. And that's the work very hard and diligently, get perfect grades, don't fail, be perfect, go out and become you know, a college graduate and then go work for a company for 20 to 30 years, get the bennies and you're going to be good and life's going to be great. You're going to arrive safely at retirement. That's been a promise that has been happening for a long time in America. And I watched both my mom and my dad do that. My dad was an officer in the Navy and he graduated college when he graduated high school, went in, was a Vietnam vet. And my mom worked as well at Pratt and Whitney and uh, Grumman Aerospace They moved from New York to California in 1978, got here in San Diego. I was born in 1981, and my dad got laid off in 1993 from General Dynamics when defense budgets started to get cut. There was austerity there. And a year later, he passed away, Hmm. and no life insurance in the house. My mom had four of us, so she had to figure out how she was going to raise four children under 18. I still don't know how she did it. Mothers are amazing, and... (laughs) 
that's definitely a feat. So I, I saw what it was like. I saw what it was like for a family not to have life insurance. They thought they were good. Oh, you got a corporate policy, but that policy had to pay out if it was an accident or if while he was working. And unfortunately that circumstance didn't happen. So going from having everything, vacationing two or three times a year to having absolutely nothing and watching all those years of sacrifice go away, um, that, that kind of molded me. And I started working, I couldn't go to college watched all my friends go to college and they asked me, Hey, what university are you going to? Well, I haven't decided yet. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, haven't really decided on yet on what university I'm going to go to. I mean, the thing is, is my mom had a choice yeah. and it was, Hey, you can go to school, you can go to college and get some student aid. But if you do that, then that means they're going to cut my social security benefits off. So my mom had to make a choice. So I said, mom, I'm just going to keep working. I'm just going to go work. And I was self-taught. I, I was a little bit of an autodidact in regards to technology. It was a hobby of mine. My brothers used to make fun of me. I used to have the eight inch Coke bottle glasses and I used to sit at home and work on the computer all day long, but it turned into a career for me. And I became a systems analyst and a network engineer for a movie producer. And then at that point in 2003, 2004, uh, I said, why don't we sell this stuff online? And then from there I transitioned to this e-commerce division, but I went through two pain points, Matt. Okay. as an adult. Okay. First was 9-11. So I saw what 9-11 did to the country. I saw what it did uh, from a business standpoint, from an economy standpoint, and losing my job. Then from there, I experienced 2008. Because in 2008, everybody was a real estate investor. I had three stated income loans. Things were great. Life was awesome. Yeah. Lost all three of those houses. Kept my job. But I started to watch my corporate responsibilities increase, and I watched my pay decrease. Wow. And you know, making one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. One day, I woke up and I went, "I'm never going to own this company. I'm never going to own this business. I don't own anything here. I could be fired tomorrow, and I can't be mad at the guy who owns the business for making two or three, four or five million dollars a year, and me not, because he takes all the risk." So, I was looking for something, and in 2010, someone approached me from php agency and they said it's life insurance and i went i know nothing about this industry <laughs> i've never owned a business and they said it's okay we're going to train you i went to uh, an event with three or four hundred people and it was the first time i ever seen anything like that and i was hooked i was sold and that's how i got involved in this industry and it's been a blast ever since it's always so interesting to see the type of pain points and life journeys uh that people experienced that gets them into this industry you know sometimes i always say you know we don't choose this industry the entry sometimes has a funny way of choosing us. And uh, Merlene has a funny uh, 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 understanding of that as well as with her siblings. Uh, Chris, I, I never knew you had siblings. Uh, where, are you, where are you in the mix with your, your, your uh, three other siblings? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I, I have an older sister. Um, she was, you know, not really a part of our lives when we were growing up. She didn't come into our lives later on. Mm. Um, she's a part of our lives now. Um, so she's the oldest. She's in her late 50s. And then I have an older brother who's in his early 50s. Then I have another older brother who is in his uh, late 40s, mid, for, mid to late 40s. And then I have myself, who's 39, about to be 40 this year, which is pretty amazing. 40 club. I'm going to, I'm going to join that club this year. It's pretty exciting. Mean guy, mean guy time to win free, man. Come on, come on. Come I know on, it. I know close. it. The funny thing about it is, is that I, people keep telling me, they say, you don't look, it's like, as men get older, they get, they get more beautiful is what I've heard. So <laughs> I'm excited I'm about it. I'm, not, so I'm looking true. forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. It's a natural progression. And then I have a younger brother who is about four years younger than me. So I, I, I wouldn't say I'm a middle child because the numbers don't work there, but I would like to say that I've, most of my life growing up, I felt like that middle child a lot in the dynamic of things. I was kind of always to myself, um, wasn't involved in sports, wasn't very competitive, was picked last, you know, was kind of always to myself there in those regards. It wasn't very outgoing as a, as a, as a child. I kind of was always thinking to myself. So I'd say I was a middle child. Guys, if you're watching this live stream right now, you can relate to Chris Philp. We want to see that in the chat section here in the live chat here on YouTube. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you also chat in the comment section below. Could you relate to Chris Philp? Now, uh, back to that comment that the older you get, the more beautiful you become. I think Marlene Gaetan can attest to that. I mean, after all, you guys are only expecting a baby here pretty soon. Yes, my husband, let me tell you, uh, he's in his 40s and he just keeps looking better and better and better. So <laughs> I don't know what happens uh, after you hit 40, but I think you guys start to age 
age backwards. So it's going to be a good club to join. Yes. Uh, Chris, I have a question. Earlier, you mentioned that, you know, um, you saw how the economy changed in 2009 and then how um, life changed again in 2008. Our CEO typically says that people tend to make decisions when they're in pain. It's typically not when somebody is comfortable. What advice can you give to the people that maybe were affected during this whole COVID pandemic last year? The business owner that shut down never opened up again. The couple that maybe had tenants that didn't pay rent for a year that are about to lose that house. Uh, what would you say to that person that's in pain watching this, uh, that is thinking about making a life-changing decision? Yeah, I mean, th that's a phenomenal, that's a phenomenal point. And I think that a lot of people today, uh, they, they just kind of, they wait. You know, there's a saying that I always repeat to myself every day, Marlene, and it says the middle class are waiting to be rescued where the world class know no one's coming to the rescue. And I, I always kind of talk myself to that every day. I repeat that self in my mind when I'm making decisions because the reality is this, you, now is the most important time whether you were someone who came out of this pandemic or is coming out of this pandemic ahead or you're flat or you're below, and a lot of people are flat or below, regardless of which one of those three seasons you're in or positions you're in, now has never been a better time to learn new skill sets and to get into something different and to explore something different because you're, you're fast approaching the end of time, which means time goes faster the older you get. And yes. sooner or later, you're not going to have those decisions to make. And for me, I look and I go, you got to make decisions and you got to learn new skills and you got to, you got to start broadening your horizons. But most importantly, I would think whatever you thought worked in the past, don't expect it to work in the future. You got to completely overhaul yourself. So this is exactly a natural destruct. And in order to have a construct, you have to have a de deconstruct. And right now that's happening. And you're seeing a lot of new players rise up and you're seeing a lot of new industries rise up and a lot of new ships. So, you know, for me, it's always me moving forward, always be learning new skill sets, always be evolving. It's a natural way of life that those things that grow and evolve are those things that survive, those things that stay the same. They don't, they don't move. Constant is the only change in life. So learn new skill sets. And that's why I love this industry. It's a phenomenal industry. It's always changing, but always being in the right place at the right time. And I know that your brother introduced you to the business, but uh, you know, people see you today, President's Council, $5,000 earner, uh, very established here in the company, but walk me through what was it like when your brother first introduced you? Was it, was it uh, uh, something to get used to? Did you think it was a little weird? Because I know you said you never saw yourself doing insurance, but I think there's a lot of people watching this that say that makes sense. But, you know, what was that transition to? Because I think everybody has a little bit of skepticism in the beginning, right? A hundred percent. And I was the biggest skeptic. And, and the thing for me was, is that, you know, it's funny because when you're ready to receive, when you're looking and you're ready to receive, things will come to you. And I was getting ready. There was a, uh, there was a young lady that I was going to partner with about three months before I joined PHP. And she had access to wholesale distributors. And I was going to just teach people how to sell stuff online. I was getting ready to leave my job and do that. And I had my whole three car garage cleaned out. I was ready to become a warehouse. I was ready to do, do this stuff. And, you know, God rest her soul. She passed away, didn't end up working. And at that point I was so stressed out because I was like, I know I want to make this move. There's got to be more. And I went on vacation. That's what you do when you're stressed out, by the way, <laughs> you need to make a big decision. You go on vacation. And I went on vacation and my brother's calling me. He's blowing up my phone. He's saying, you got to come check out this thing. And I'm always like, okay, what does he mean this thing, right? And I get back and he's still bugging me and it's 9.30 on Friday. I'm married about a year and a half. And most people, if you're married, what do married couples do Friday night at 9.30? You're at home watching TV. That's what you're doing, you know? And I'm at home Netflix and he goes, and chill, what are you man. doing? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, what are you doing right now? I said, uh, I'm at home watching TV. He said, you got to come to a meet, a business meeting right now. I said, okay, tell me what's, what's up. I'll be there tomorrow. He said, no, you got to come now. And I'm like, that, fr that Friday night. Yeah. <laughs> Friday night at night. I said, like, okay, send me your address. So what did I'm your wife say? The text to come. Huh? What did your wife say? Oh, well we're married. Right. So, you know, I said, Hey babe, uh, I got to go to a business meeting right now. And she goes, okay, bye. See you later. <laughs> but 
I'm waiting for the text to come in and it comes in and it's his house address. And I go, oh man, I know what's getting ready to happen right now. I know exactly what's happening. So I went there fully prepared to rescue him. I, I was went there fully prepared to say, what, what are you doing? What'd you get yourself involved in? But the thing is, is that when I went there, because because it sent you a network marketing signals, is that what you're saying? Chris? Yeah, exactly. Network marketing. I'm like going, okay, I'm about to get involved in some something. I gotta, you know, exactly some and, scheme. And, yep. And when I came on board, at that time there was a company uh, that was huge. It was a juice company. It was huge, and everyone was hitting you up about it. It was massive, massive, massive. So I thought that's what it was. But I showed up, and for me, Marlene, the key thing was in the room was a gentleman who was in his mid thirties, African-American man, two masters, a PhD. His name was Dr. Len Cooper, giving a presentation about saving America. And I went, if this guy that has two masters and a PhD is telling me about how to become a business owner and left that to do this, I think I, I think I ought to listen. And, mm. and that was, that, that's what got me into the business right there. The crusade of saving America. As soon as somebody said saving America, I went, let's do this, baby. I was ready to go. Cause I'd never served in the country, but I has an admiration for people who served. That's awesome. That's it. Yeah, by the way, guys, if you're tuning in right now, we got a jam-packed show today. We are uh, also going to be discussing here about this show. We're going to be doing a recap of our Train to Trainer event that was in Dallas, Texas. I wanted to say two weeks ago, but it was just last week. It feels like two weeks have already gone by, but it was just last week. And uh, we're going to get to Chris's perspective on our Train to Trainer event, Marlene's perspective on Train to Trainer event. Uh, the impact of entrepreneurship, you know, based on what's going on in our economy right now, based on potential higher inflation, hyperinflation kicking in. Uh, unemployment numbers that were shockingly high, especially after four to six trillion dollars was just infused into our economy. The laziness that was created during the pandemic, and also the vision of uh, where Chris and, and Marlene see what PHP is about to do the vision of America, because that's something that, as you just heard earlier, that Chris Philip is fired up about. So, Chris, let me ask you this question Why was saving America so important? Why, what, 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 what uh, string did that tug in your heart? Well. I, I, I mean, I think for me, Matt, I was born in 1981, and we're a very, I don't want to say we're a rare breed nowadays, but we're, we, that's a, it's a totally different thought process. And when I look at the difference between America today and America the way I know America, it's vastly different. Mm. And there's no, there's no, generations before my generation, you had Kennedy, and there was always a vision there's always a theory. There's always a, here's what America's doing. Here's where we're going. Here's what we stand for. Yeah. And then for me, I grew up, you know, and I saw Reagan and I saw Bush senior and I saw Clinton and it was, uh, this is America. This is where we're going. This is what we're doing. This is what we're fighting for. And now it just seems like we're not really fighting for anything anymore. Now at this point, there's no cohesive general direction of you know, where America's going and what we're fighting for and everyone's unified anymore. I mean, you know, Yamamoto said that the most dangerous thing to do would be invade America because, because behind every blade of grass, there's a patriot with, a, with an armed weapon. Mm. I don't know if America's that way anymore. And to me, when someone says saving America, you could say whatever you want. There's a lot of controversy in America right now. We have our problems. We're always going to have our problems. Uh, every country has their problems, but you got to understand that this country is a very young country and this country did in 200 years what it took other countries 5,000 years to do. Mm -hmm. There's a statement in that. So, you know, America has, has pro proven, has proof of concept that no other country or system in the world has brought more people to have the freedom of choice, freedom of religion, freedom of sexual preference, freedom of bracing a family. Yep. more so than America. And you can't, you can't, there's no historical evidence anywhere in the history of this world that shows that the system and what America has built has done anything more significant. So for me, that's important. We, we need a common goal and a common theory again. So saving America means putting this country back on track to be a beacon of hope again. Yes. And, I'm, go ahead, you know, I wanted to just comment on that. It's um, what Chris is saying. It's so true. You know, I, I was born in Mexico, came here as an immigrant when I was three years old and let me tell you, the worst day in America is still better than the best day anywhere else, you know. So right now we see a flooding of, you know, all these kids crossing the border. And I'm thinking, wow, if this was 1998, 1988, that would have been, that would have been me. You know, my yep. parents worked two and three jobs just to bring us here, just to give us an opportunity, you know. Uh, so I think we, we take for granted what we have here in America. That's why I think it's so important to travel, to get out, to see what the rest of the world experiences, because 
although right now we have a lot of division and we will always have our issues, it, it nowhere comes close to the rest of the world. Let's let's talk about that. Let's talk about what's going on in America instead of you know. Uh, let's, let's shift that in right here. Let's talk about inflation. It, it's uh, uh, with, with our, our, our country right now. Uh, what's gas like? I'm in I'm in Illinois, and uh, I had a, of course I got to fill up my car with premium gas, and so it's uh, four twenty five a gallon. <laughs> <coughs> what's gas prices like there in? Uh, and I think it's three three uh, uh, fifty three seventy five a gallon for um, eighty seven and eighty nine. Um, unleaded gas. What's gas prices like there in, in Cali? Here in, in Orange County, it's about four fifteen. For un, for just eighty seven, eighty nine, not premium. Yes. So it's more, more than it is in Illinois. Chris, what's it like in Sand Dog? Yeah, I, I mean four hour gas across the board. Uh, I just filled up last night. Left my office around ten thirty, eleven o'clock last night. Filled up at my favorite, you know, gas station for sixty something a gallon for ninety one, and. I was saying it a couple months ago. I said, guys, get ready. $5 gas by June. $5 gas yes. by June in SoCal. There's absolutely, I'm having flashbacks in 2014 when I was building hardcore and going, I can't even believe we're seeing this gas price again, 450 a gallon. I can't even believe it again. But history repeats itself. It, it, it just always does. And that's just the pain point that people are going to face right now today. So with, is, with the hundred, I'm, I'm sorry, Chris, go ahead. No, go ahead. Would the hundred fifty thousand dollars a year earning movie exec be complaining about four dollars, five dollars in gas, whereas the half million dollar income earning Chris, uh, uh, Philip and Mary Philip with uh, entrepreneurship, are you guys worried about the rising pro- uh, prices of gas and in, in uh, goods and services? I, I'm not. I'm not. And, and and this brings me to a recollection. A recollection. I, I mean, obviously I am because I sympathize a lot, but um, I know what I did. To, I know what we did. You know, to get where to where we're at right now, but. I made a comment back in 2014 and there was a massive Facebook discussion of, oh my God, gas prices, gas prices, gas prices. I said, you guys, I'm no longer going to worry about the the problem. I'm going to worry about the solution and I don't want to worry about gas prices anymore. So I'm just going to go figure out how to make more income. And, and, and then that goes back to what you said earlier, Marlene is we got, you got to develop new skill sets because again, most of us are going to be waiting for someone to rescue us, but we got to understand that nobody's going to come and rescue us. And that's exactly what we're doing. Uh, absolutely, 150,000. Matt, I don't know if you know this or not. I shared this with somebody just yesterday. Uh, I believe it was yesterday or it was maybe Monday. San Diego County, a median home price, 825,000. That's up from a year ago, 670,000. And we're not talking about a mansion here. We're just talking about- <laughs> 825,000. Wow. For, and, and, median. And like, yeah, yeah, median. And that's like- 800 square feet, single car, detached, one, two bedroom or three bedroom, one bathroom. So absolutely, that's a big concern for a lot of people. And 150,000, I have six kids. I, I have six children. So you can't, you can't raise children on that. It's a quarter million dollars to raise a child from zero to 18 right now. You cannot raise children on $150,000 a year. So if you like big families, you like a lot of kids, you like to go have fun, you like to do those things. I don't ever want to have to tell my kids no for monetary reasons. So I, I just I just looked this up here on uh, on uh, um, the United States Census Bureau and another one I went to on apartmentlist.com. Okay, the average household income in San Diego where you're at is 79,673. Now, Marlene, you're in the mortgage business. You're in the real estate business. If I'm making household income of 79,673 in San Diego, can I afford the average median yeah. home in San Diego? No, 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 no. I think uh, maybe a lot of families live together and that's how they're able to do it. But that's just ridiculous, the housing right now for something so small. But I think uh, we're just kind of getting used to it because um, there is not a lot of houses available. So that drives up the cost, you know, but to points, uh, Chris's point that we're, nobody's going to come to rescue us. You know, Matt, you just wrote an article that talks about people don't want to work. I think today's younger generation uh, do have the mindset that somebody's coming to rescue us that somehow that's going to happen. You know, uh, I think a lot of young people, they're waiting for, for something to happen. Here in California, we're recalling Newsom, right? And now he's offering to give everybody an additional $1,000. So I think uh, during wow. the pandemic, there is a group of people that are saying, wait a minute, why do I have to go back to work when maybe I'm going to get a check somewhere? And I think that that's hindering people from saying, you know what, I have to go create my own fortune. And instead of waiting around, even if you did wait around, even if in a perfect world, there, you know, news was going to send you a thousand shots. Universal basic income in 
in, in uh, California. Is that still enough to really live on? Not at all. No. Not at all. Every time I go to a, a, a Costco or something, I look at the prices and I ask somebody that has, you know, six children like Chris on, on, a, on a fixed salary, how do you do it? Like, just how do you stretch the dollar? It blows me away. I have no idea. You know, it's, it's crazy. I'm, I'm just looking at this uh, U.S. Census Bureau. Uh, they basically say if you're not making, you know, uh, if you're not making 21 bucks an hour, you're not, you can't even afford to live. Minimum income to live in San Diego is 21 bucks an hour. You know, and so, I mean, I remember when I was in the Marine Corps, I mentioned it earlier, I was in the Marine Corps there in San Diego. If I wasn't on government housing, I couldn't afford to live in San Diego. I mean, when we left, when we left San Diego, we left uh, Camp Pendleton. We just hang out in Oceanside. We just, we just hung out. We didn't hang out in San Clemente. We didn't hang out in La Jolla. We didn't hang out in these areas. We went to the, you know, the hole in the wall spot. That's where Marines hung out. Is, is, is we were broke. But, uh, you know, how, you know, Chris, how is entrepreneurship, how has our platform at PHP Agency helped you not only think bigger, but also earn bigger? I mean, that's a great point. You, you know, educational system today in America is so flawed. It, 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 and, it, and it forces people to think that they have to be perfect and, and they have to, they can't make mistakes and they, they can't try. They got to conform. Um, you know, you look at the average median income salaries of all these professions, and they just don't stack up comparably to obviously what we're talking about here, which is inflation and cost of living and raising family and living a decent life. Mm -hmm. The platform of PHP has allowed a, a scared, uh, shy, insecure introvert like myself to become somebody. And I say it all the time to people. I said, look, this, this, this opportunity allowed a nobody to become a somebody. <laughs> and if you look at the statistics, you look at where I'm at. Uh, I'm 12 years old. I come home from, you know, sixth grade, middle school. My, I find my father, you know, passed away in the house. You found him. Oh, wow. Him. Oh, wow. I'm alone. Wow. So I'm alone. Right. So I'm alone. There's no one else in the house. I call 911 and I You're watch 12 the years whole old. thing. Yeah. I watched the whole thing go down, watch the paramedics work on him, watch him take him out. And I think at that point, it's where I, I developed a degree of stoicism. Uh, but that also was a good thing, but a bad thing. And the bad thing was, is that at that point, I remember that was the last night I ever cried. Right. And this platform has allowed someone like me who became very scientific, very technical, very matter of fact, to, to learn how to be emotional again and how to love again and how to, to grow again and how not to look at things from a perspective of just, well, it is what it is and you just got to do and it's the cold, hard world and life is life. So this platform has allowed a non-college educated 2.0 GPA person like myself to become a successful entrepreneur where I can afford to travel three or four times a year. I can afford to drive two six figure cars. I can live in a million dollar house on a hill on five acres. I have resources and I don't get up in the morning and go, Hmm, I wonder if my industry is going to be okay. I wonder if my jobs, I wonder if today's going to be the day that I pissed my boss off last week that I'm going to be fired or laid off. I wonder what's going to impact me. It, there's comfort in knowing that you can open up multiple bank accounts and have savings. There's comfort and knowing that, hey, if I want to up my income by $100,000 this year, I want to give myself a $100,000 raise, I could do that. I mean, this platform is allowed to do that. COVID-19 was difficult. 2020 was a massive, massive difficult year for a lot of people. I made $150,000 more last year than I did in 2019. And 2019 was a baller year for a lot of people. That's the power of the PHP platform. Where can you go to give yourself $150,000 raise in a year where things are crashing around everybody? That only happens in places like PHP Agency to develop someone into an entrepreneur, to think bigger. Matt, it's funny. He says, oh, you make a half a million dollars a year. I go, I'm tired of making a half a million dollars a year. I, I need to know what it's like to be, to be, to be, to make a million dollars a year. I need to know what it's like to, to travel, not first class, but private, you know, that little airport next to the airport. That's the airport I want to go to. My kids talk about that stuff. That's the most special thing to me is that my kids have grown up in PHP. I had my first son in 2011. That was the year I went full-time in PHP. That was the year Mary and I went full-time in PHP. And he was born on February 1st of 2011. And we went to Cancun. That was our first trip. But our kids have been raised in this business. He's nine now or 10 now. 
And the thing about that is, is they speak this language now. Just before we got on here, I was texting me saying, Dad, the Mercedes EQS is about to dethrone the Tesla in mileage, in, in range. I'm, and then my next son, he loves cars. He goes, I think, Dad, a good starter car for me will be a Ford GT or a Ferrari Pista. And I'm going, nice, hey, nice. You know, nice. where are we traveling to next, Dad? We went to Cancun. Eh, we don't want to go to Cancun. Where are we traveling to next? So if I'm thinking at this level, the most exciting part for me is my kids are thinking at, a, at an extremely high level even before me. So the biggest joy for me is, holy moly, what are these? What level of thinking are these kids going to be on when they're my age? They're how billionaire many, thinking. How many kids you got now, Chris? So I got six children. So I've got <laughs> five what? of my own. So five of my own and my daughter, who's 14, uh, she's Mary, my wife's third cousin. We adopted her and brought her into our lives when she was four years old. And she's been with us ever since then. And, wow. you know, she's, she's part of our, our, our fold. And we don't ever really ever use that word. It's a technical word to me. But so with her, that makes six. So um, it's been an amazing joy. And we plan to adopt probably in the next two to three years. Once we hit a million dollars, we're going to adopt two or three more kids. We just, we love children. There's so many children that need to be rescued. That's part of a why for us as well is, is reforming foster care. You guys are incredible parents. Uh, let me tell you, I've had the privilege of traveling with you and Mary around the world with your kids. And if you can give us the ages, that would be great. But I just remember going to the airport and they are like back to back to back and they all line up next to each other, military style that each hold their own little bag. It's like, follow the leader. I mean, the level of discipline for such little kids and there's so many of them, I was just shocked. Can you tell us a little bit about the systems that you guys use? Well, I mean, in, in my wife is his third generation from Guadalajara, from the Jalisco. So Marlene, I know you know this secret. It's called the chunkla. That's, that's exactly <laughs> why everybody's lying. <laughs> but uh, uh, no, I mean- by chunkla. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, no, I mean, the thing about it is this, is, you know, America today has a real big lack of morals, ethics, values, principles, family dynamic, and that's a that's another conversation but look mary my wife says all the time says there's too many of you there's too many of you not to know how to clean up there's too many of you not to know how to get dressed there's too many of you to, to figure out how to go to bed so people are sh genuinely shocked marlene when they come to our house and they go you have six kids it's eight o'clock in the night they're all in bed they all put themselves to bed there's no what's going on here and for us i think the secret has been uh, a, a thing called ferberization ferber method and there's a lot of books on it. And we taught our kids how to self-soothe from day one, how to be independent, how to self-soothe that three months old, they're sleeping on their own, they go to bed on their own. And the ages are 18 months. It's my daughter, my oldest daughter. So she's one of the bookends. And then from there, there is four, uh, eight, nine, 10, 14. And the boys, the three boys, you know, the older boys, everyone thinks they're twins because they're kind of always a year apart, 2011, 2012, 2013. Jonah is the youngest boy. He's born in 2016. And then obviously Nicole, who's the oldest, she's 14. She's the daughter. So I always say the daughters are the two bookends to the boys. The boys are in the middle and it's up to Viola, who's the youngest and Nicole at the oldest to keep those four boys on the straight and narrow and in line. But everybody's a team. Everybody in the family's a team. Everybody, when one of us fails, we all fail. When one of us wins, we all win. And that's a culture. And we've always talked to our kids like adults. We don't do the Google baby talk. For, as soon as they're walking, it's adult talk. Mommy, don't do this. Daddy, don't do this. Do this, do this, do that. This is the right way. And we process that with our kids. And then there's rewards and sacrifices as well. Hey, we're not going to be around a lot because we're building and we're entrepreneurs, but here's what we're going to do. So everybody in the family is bought into that. And everyone is bought into the notion that, look, if you screw up out in the streets, that's not a reflection just on you. It's a reflection on your brothers, your sisters, your mom, your dad, and your grandparents. And when we're all gone, the last thing that hears our name, we're the next great American family. And we're all bought into that. We just want to build that culture and we want to build that, that dynamic. So that's why everybody's in line and you got to have a system. Cause if you're a mom and a dad, you don't want to get home and yell at your kids, teach them how to clean up after themselves and they're a team. So they work together. So that's, that's helped us a lot with raising a family and running a business. 
Yeah, one of the coolest stories Mary shared with me was people see you today, they say, wow, million dollar house, two six figure cars. You were always successful. You were always the chosen one. But I known you guys for many years now. Uh, so when Mary shares with me the story of, uh, you know, when your kids were younger and your business was taking off, you transitioned from being an insurance producer to an insurance builder. And hopefully you'll tell us about that, that process shortly after. But uh, Mary tells me about uh, Christmas, how each kid gets $5. They go to the dollar store. And I told my husband, I'm like, I, I'm going to definitely copy that because kids get so spoiled. One of my fears is that my kids grow up spoiled. So, uh, you know, uh, ever since then, you know, I, I like that that method of Dollar Tree. And by the way, they must think they're in Chuck E. Cheese because they each get to pick five different things, right? Yeah, they love to say five items today, right, mom? Five items? Yes, five items. There, you know, Mary does such a great job of, of making sure that people stay grounded and humbled. And yeah, I mean, there was times when we were building this business. I remember, you know, you got to go to the free toy line with the, the trash bag, the black trash bag. And it's not the nice trash bag. It's the kind of trash bag that if you blow on it, it, it rips open you guys, <laughs> <laughs> and you got to get your free toys. And I remember doing that. And, and, and in the back of our mind, it was, this is where we're going. This is where we're going. This is where we're going. This is where we're building towards. We're going to build a company. We're going to build a business and keeping the kids grounded, you know, where, yeah, you're going to go to the Dollar Tree. <laughs> I remember- awesome. I remember new clothes time was, hey, we're getting hand-me-downs from from uh, from a, a sibling, Mary, one of Mary's siblings, her sister, and the kids are so excited. They all line up, they sit down, they go, what do they got? What do we got in the bag? What do we got in the bag? It's it's new clothes day. And they still look <laughs> forward to that, even to this day. So there's a, we've done a very good job of putting a value on things and nothing could be taken for granted. You know, Marlene, you know, you know what I do? I just got inspired right now. Maybe what we need to do is show the audience our home screens on bamboo in terms of what we're currently making in terms of cash because people don't think the money that we're making is real. You want to do that towards the end of the show? Marlene, you show your screen. I'll show my screen. Chris, you share your screen. Guys, if you want to see the type of income that the three of us are making here at what's it, the, the, uh, the, uh, what's, what's today's date? The 19th of the month. 19th. And the reason why I'm saying that is because our commission just got updated by now, uh, by Wednesday. So we're going to be sharing with you our screen. If you stick around, we'll show you the type of income we're making up to the 19th of this month of May. If you share this uh, podcast, you share this on YouTube, you share this on Facebook, and uh, yes, that's right, Maxine Hernandez. I'll show you mine if I sh if you show yours. <laughs> uh, Hiram, Hiram Figueroa says it's called a family foundation. Uh, Jason Cruz, blessing this morning. I think Jason Cruz is out in Maui. I think uh, Jason Cruz's wife just passed her license. And uh, Jason's about to get his license. We got to get him in a PHP agency, though. Awesome. Jason, what's going on, bro? We love to work with you in Maui. Uh, Donna Ellis, awesome. What a blessing you are for the next generation. Uh, Life with Desi and Diego says, my husband and I have seven daughters. Wow. wow. Seven wow. girls. Wow. Woo! Marlene, you got all boys for right now. All boys, all boys. Third one on the way. I told <laughs> my husband after this, we're going to, adopt or foster because there are a lot of work to make <laughs> oh man so um let, let's 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 discuss this real good one thing one thing i want to bring up is you know uh you, chris you just mentioned this time last year you had three hundred fifty thousand dollars in income right a year later because you chose to work during the pandemic you chose to build the business you chose to pivot adapt adjust to the zoom world to the zoom economy you did the best you could in terms of meeting. If people were comfortable and safe with it, they were meeting with you in the office or a place you can be in person, face to face. But you decided to grow during the pandemic. You went from three hundred fifty thousand dollars income, and today you're over five hundred thousand dollars of income. Would you, would you agree that possibly a little bit of laziness was created by a lot of other people during this pandemic? And there's a big reason why. It's potentially, might be a reason why people may not want to go back to it because they're on the government payroll because they might. They say, you know what, I'm making more money on unemployment. Is that coming up in your recruiting interviews? Is it coming up in people that you're hiring and, and selling to that they're get, making more money on unemployment and federal stimulus than they are potentially here going business for themselves or at another job? Yeah, I mean, I, I, we see that, uh, you know, quite often. And, you know, we were talking about this conversation the other day. I was having a conversation with, with Mary and we were talking about it over dinner. And I said, you know, more and more people today are are making more and you see this as well where these restaurants that are trying to reopen these businesses are trying to reopen they're saying i can't find people 
And you would think you'd be able to find people help wanted, help wanted everywhere. And they can't find people. you'd think you'd be able to, and they're like, well, why would I go back to work? I'm making more money on double unemployment, triple unemployment. And Marlene just alluded to it as well, where the state of California is going to start stimulating again. Uh, why would I go back? Why would I do that? And you see people getting stuck here now. And that's a dangerous place to be because eventually the party's over. Eventually yep. something ends. Eventually someone in, in a congressional budget office is going to wake up and go, wait a minute, right? We can't do this anymore. Or, or eventually someone's going to say, okay, well, now it's back to reality because eventually someone has to pay for something. There's no such thing as free lunch. It's always the way it is. There's always a risk and reward. There's always a cause and effect. And I think the biggest challenge for today for people is twofold, Matt. I don't think it's just a fact that they're getting unemployment and they're getting a lot of it. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the, the, the flip side of that is this. People have been for a very long time told that they have to follow that system earlier that I talked about, which is get the degree, get the job right? And you're going to be good. Well, every seven to 12 years is a cycle. Something happens. Before this was 2008, 2009. Before that was 9-11. Before that was the tech crash. Before that was the, the crash, stock crash in the 90s. Before it, it, that was, was 1993. Before that was uh, the Black Monday in the 80s. Before that Persia was Gulf the-, War, the 87. Yep. Exactly. exactly. Before that was the oil crisis in the 70s. You can go all the way back for over 100 years. Well, that was Vietnam. Years. Yeah, you can keep going. Yep. There's always something. Well, I think right now you're starting to see people that are going to go, what the heck am I going to go work my ass off for another, for another seven to 12 years again when I know it's just going to re reset again and I'm going to be back down to square one again. And things are just getting more expensive. I mean, you think about it. Things are more expensive today than were seven years ago. But yet people are really aren't making that much more money. So why would I go work for ABC company again for another seven to 12 years and then seven to 12 years? Oh, I'm going to have to shift around again. And then what's the, what's the antidote? Well, you got to work two or three more jobs. Oh, mom's got to work. Oh, you got to go back to school and get more educated to become more marketable. Why would you do that? Why? So I think people are starting to realize they go, they're kind of throwing their arms up and saying, I can't win this thing. I can't win it. And that's, that, that, that's, that's going hand in hand now with the, well, I can't win this thing. Don't worry. The government's going to send me, more money, why, why? And then they just start to slowly forget about their goals and their dreams. They start to slowly forget about who they are, what they are, what their identity is and what they could become. And it takes an opportunity in an environment like PHP to get someone to think bigger and to go, wait a minute. Psh, that's exactly why people need to become entrepreneurs today. It's exactly why people need coaches and mentors today. It's exactly why people need this opportunity more so today, because this is kind of like the, the defib you know, you get a, <laughs> Clear. Americans, you know, they need a shock today to, to get back into the game because yeah. that's what made America great. It wasn't the fact that, you know, we have capitalistic system. We have all those things. Yeah, that's it. But that system allows people to create stories of success. America is great because we have so many different stories of success from all across the land. We need more stories. The person who's watching this right now needs to go, I need to become great because America needs my story. And people just don't want to tell a story today because yep. no one's helping them do that. They're hearing the same old stuff again. Yep. PHP's you know, not it, doing that though. It's, it's funny because you know, that, that's a question that we all have to pose ourselves. How does a family build a life? Uh, what dynamics we all need to assess? Like you just talked about this vicious cycle happening every seven to 12 years and how to overcome it. I think it's a big question. If you're watching this right now, you got to look at yourself in the mirror or write it down in your notes. How do I build a life, assess all the different dynamics in my life, kids, wife, husband, parents, right? One of the dynamics I've got to assess right now is my, my aging parents. Thank goodness we're in a business where we can retire them. But now the other phases now is healthcare. You know, my, my father is not in the uh, best of shape this, this last 30, 60 days. And so, you know, in, in, a, in a weird way, you know, uh, uh, Chris and Marlene, I'm trying to find a way for him to have another next. Here's what I bet. Here's next. Here's next. Here's next. Because giving him something to, to fight. His big next was 50th winning anniversary. Hey, dad, man, could you imagine our, our convention in August? Can you imagine? So I'm just giving him something that could you imagine our kids next week, next week, next month, next week? I just wanted my dad having something to fight for. Um, Marlene, I want to ask you, you know, you've been around, you've been around, you're, you're a co-founder of a PHP agency. I want to talk about train a trainer right quick. And a year and a half after we all, a year and some change after we all get shut down, we're finally all back together again. 
as a company. You know, it's not Zoom anymore. We did Zoom it's last united, year. United, and it feels so good. It was so <laughs> amazing to see all of our PHP family, and it was amazing to see how much we've grown. We had uh, thousands of agents there at this event. Um, Seventy percent of them were Zoom babies. These are agents oh. that were bred during the pandemics and um, agents that did everything virtually, you know, to everybody watching this that maybe has to homeschool their kids and I need to make money from home. 70% of our agents were able to support their families, pay their bills, um, you know, still homeschool their kids because that's the reality for so many parents um, and do it from home. So what a blessing that is, you know, and to Chris's point that people do need to tell their, their, they need to start dreaming again. An environment definitely helps. It definitely helps. Whether it's virtual, we have trainings every single day, um, you know, but if you're privileged enough to go to an office, it's such a beautiful thing to get a chance because, you know, we become who we're around, right? We make the average of the five, seven people that we're constantly around. Uh, mentorship, reading books, an environment, maybe you're not motivated. Maybe you, you doubt yourself. Maybe you think, oh, it's nice for Chris, but maybe it's not for us. Maybe Matt can do it, but maybe it's not for me. Maybe Mark lean got lucky but it's not for me um let me tell you i think anybody can i think anybody can do this anybody you know i mean i got started as a 23 year old i was just looking for a shot you know and i think when your why is important the how doesn't matter i just knew i didn't want to see my mom cleaning houses anymore i didn't want to see my dad working two and three jobs they sacrifice a lot i just wanted somebody to pour into me a little bit and teach me and i was able to find that here in php but this event was just absolutely incredible you know, Chris, uh, by the way, Marlene, phenomenal. Uh, Chris, you, know, you you taught uh, a little bit more of the skills side um, at Train Insurance. You talked about, you know, executive bonus. You talked about a little bit more advanced life insurance strategies, uh, which I think for a lot of people, like, what the heck? We could do that type of stuff? Very cool. Very cool. But let me ask you this question. What's the difference, in your opinion, between skills and, and, and talent? Because there's a lot of talented people inside the insurance industry. Um, and, and, but they don't duplicate versus our skill set at PHB agency. We just don't build salespeople with talent. We want to create transferable skills to create sales leadership and, and to duplicate ourselves and other people. So what, what's your two, what's your two cents on that? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I look at my brother who recruited me into the business. I mean, one of the most talented people that you will ever, ever meet. Uh, this is the kind of person you can walk in the room and naturally everybody wants to talk to him and he can talk to anybody that's totally the polar opposite of me. I have to develop that. So the thing is here is, is that, look, talent is a great thing. It's a blessing, but at the same time, talent can be a curse. And then John Maxwell wrote a book a while ago, is talent is never enough. Talent only will get somebody so far. And, and, and talent is a very good way of tricking somebody into thinking that, you know, they're good and they're going to make it skills the best thing about skills is that you don't have to have any talent <laughs> <laughs> you can you can have no talent in the world but skill sets are things that can be learned and caught and developed and worked on and refined and built into talents so you could develop new talents just simply by developing new skill sets skills and developmental skills have allowed have allowed someone like me to develop public speaking skills have to develop communication skills, people skills. I didn't have any of those before. And that's not a talent of mine. Yeah. But through PHP and the platform and what an event like Train the Trainers does is it allows someone that says, look, I'm not talented at anything yeah. it, to be able to come in and be empowered and walk out of it and go, wait a minute, all I got to do is work. All I got to do is practice. All I got to do is learn something. All I got to do is work on it and develop something. I'm in. Yeah. So skills are an ultimate way to get anybody through the door. That's what, that's what capitalism does for people. Capitalism doesn't care about how talented you are, how good looking you are, how, how amazing you can, you can, you know, play basketball. Talent only cares about two things. Our, our, our capitalism cares about two things. Number one, it cares about your speed of improvement, so meaning how fast can you improve, how much can you improve, and then your work ethic. I know a lot of lazy, talented people. <laughs> Very true. If I show up every day and you don't, I'm gonna beat you. It's the, tur it's the classic tortoise versus the hare sin uh, story. Look, the, the hare is way faster than the tortoise, but the tortoise developed skill set, kept moving, and he beat him.
because the talent got lazy. Yeah. So yeah. if you're not working hard every day, the person who's working harder than you is going to pass you up. The person who's getting better than you every day is going to pass you up. Yeah. It doesn't matter yeah. how talented you are. And you notice those people too as well because they're the loudest complainers. All the time. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> All the time, right? So, so Tim Grover, uh, uh, Patrick interviewed Tim Grover because he's releasing his next book, which is called Winning. And for many of you that don't know uh, Tim Grover, he's the one who trained, uh, he was a person trained to Michael Jordan, uh, Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade. You got it, Marlene? Oh man, that's awesome. Okay. And so he, uh, he was asked, I said, uh, uh, do you know other players? They're more talented than Michael Jordan, more talented. And Kobe Bryant, you know what his answer was? What, by the way, Chris, what do you think his answer was? I would like to say yes. Of course. You guys, there's more guys that had more raw, natural talent than Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. Could you believe that? More raw, natural talent than these two guys. But guess who worked harder at their skill? They did. They did. Yes. They did. Day in and day out. You know, Chris, when I see you do your, your, your role playing or speaking, um, you can just tell that that's just, it's, it's years and years of repetition. You remind me so much of my husband when I first met him. Um, he wasn't the fastest, guys. It took him four years to make 100,000. There are people that do that in three months. But I could not believe how many notebooks he had of trainings and seminars and how he would practice the scripts over and over and over and over again, you know? And I always say, eating a salad won't make you skinny and eating a burger won't make you fat, but it's what you repeatedly do that people underestimate. That's truly what it takes to be a professional. I know, Matt, you've been doing this for so many years and, yeah. you know, uh, looking at, at your YouTube channel grow and grow and grow, I, I, I always think, well, I gotta give it to Matt because it takes consistency. It takes consistency, you know, because everybody has challenges, you know, with parents, you know, with children, with this one got sick. And I know you're in the process of maybe, you know, looking at offices and and to still do it rain or shine, you know, that's, uh, you know, hats off to the people that can do that, because those are the people that truly uh, over a period of time transform. And then later, those same people are admired. Thank you, Marlene. Uh, Chris, I got to ask you this. You know, you've been around for a minute, too, as well. We ask every one of our guys here uh, that comes on the, the PHP podcast. There's obviously, there's other insurance companies with inside the marketplace, right? There's traditional uh, insurance organizations, other FMOs. There's other people that try to lure you into other opportunities. And by the way, Chris, before PHP agency, were you heavily, I'm gonna be honest, before PHP agency, without an insurance license, were you being heavily sought out after to become an insurance agent? Never, no one ever called me. Okay. <laughs> Okay, no. next question. After you receive your life insurance license, are you still being heavily, are you now, are you now being heavily recruited to be insurance? Three insurance times, three, three calls since we've been on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's just a daily thing. I'm so popular now. I'm so glad my phone is blowing <laughs> up. Everybody wants to talk to me, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's like we were saying earlier, you know, Tim Grover in the book of Relentless said he would, he would make people practice until it became instinctual, right? And, and that's, that's skill. But yeah, before, before PHP, nobody called me about the insurance industry. And there's a lot of different things out there. There's a lot of different options. You go anywhere and people always say, Oh, what's the difference? Why, why PHP, why PHP, why PHP? I said, it's a very simple thing. It's a very simple thing. You know, PHP is not here, not here just to show you how to make money. It's not here to show you how to be in the insurance industry. Those things are automatic. PHP is going to do that. We do that better than anyone in the industry. By the way, train the trainers. Nobody does things like that. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. PHP, at the end of the day, there's a cause and a crusade and a meaningful mission here to develop a platform and to build America's future, the world rather, not even America anymore, the world's future leaders, the future sketchers and shapers of the world are going to come out of PHP. We're here. PHP's goal and crusade is to build the next entrepreneurs, the next Elon Musk's, the next Bill Gates, the next the, the next Nobel Prize winners, the next presidents, the next world leaders will come from PHP, the next philanthropists. PHP's mission is so much bigger. PHP gives a platform for, for someone to become that person here. 
other FMOs, other FF, all those things out there, they don't do those things. It's just, hey, come in the business, we'll show you how to sell insurance. That's it. That's, and they're doing it the same old, same old, same old, same old way. Yep. PHP is a tech enabled company now. No one else in the industry can say that. Chris, have you, have you made a cold call since you've been here at PHP? Have I made a cold call? No. Yes. Uh, I, I've made a couple cold calls, but it's not my business model now. No. So it's, you're, mean, you're, you're in a warm market. 99% of the time, Matt, uh, I'm in a, I'm in a warm market. I would say, Matt, my cold callers are to my, my brothers. <laughs> 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 hey, you want to buy boss? <laughs> but, uh, click. click. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's funny, Matt, you mentioned that when I first started, you know, I was just a producer. I just sold. I didn't really, I didn't really build an agency. I didn't really cr recruit, train, build, which is really what the industry needs. I mean, you can ask any of the big companies out there. The reason why PHP is so hot is because we know how to take greenies. We know how to develop new talent versus all the other guys in the industry. They just know how to, they just know how to pick old talent. Right. Yeah. And I would go up and down a street here in, in San Diego called Miramar. And on Miramar, it's a lot yeah. of small businesses, it's where the uh, liquor stations stores, yeah. gas stations, you name it. Right. And I would walk that street every day and not in the way you're thinking, Matt, I would walk that street. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> I'd walk that street every day and I'd turn business and it would take three to four months to do it because you'd have to build a relationship. Yeah. And then when you look at the model with PHP with warm market and how we work with clients and friends, you know, family and things like that, yeah. um, two to three days versus three to four months, yeah. you know? people people want to see people want the, the human element they want to know that the person they're sitting in front of them cares yeah. we care about the people we work with we care about the people we communicate with i don't think anyone else in the industry does that they're just looking to make a sale and and, and php is we're on a mission we're on a mission yeah that's, that's big, yeah that's i think that's a big difference between having a producer mentality when you're approaching this industry versus having a builder's mentality yeah, Marley, I want to ask you that too as well, because you know, you were in the, it's very prevalent also in the, in the real estate. I mean, how many times I'll come across a real estate agent or a mortgage broker and within a year they have four different business cards because they'll go from one bank or one real, you know, real estate brokerage to another, you know, for your best of agents, Marlene, what, what keeps them at PHP agency? Because I know Chris and Mary are working together with TGA. What, what, what the best of your best agents, what keeps them here at PHP agency? And what's, what's the type of character set do they have that keeps them here? You know, I think uh, when you find a place where you can build a family around that has congruent values and principles that cares about your marriage. I mean, one of the trainings we did at Train the Trainers was a marriage seminar. And you're going <laughs> to ask, you know, where where would you get that? You're not going to get that in real estate. You're not going to get that in another company. Um, you're just not going to find that, you know. So not only are we on a mission, um, not only are we the fastest growing. I mean, we, we, we're just growing across the board. But to find a place that cares about your personal development, we have a book club. You know, you have the mentorship. You get to qualify uh, for a call called Dream Team where you get coached by our CEO and mentor, Patrick Bet David, where people in valuetainment around the world would pay 20000 just to meet him for an hour or to review your business plan here in PHP. If you perform, you get access to our CEO, Patrick Bet David. You get a chance to be mentored by him, worked by him. You know, uh, you're just not going to find that anywhere else. So I think people stick around because they know you're just not going to find that kind of value. That's it. And yeah, that's that's the biggest difference that I experienced coming from the industry, just selling policies, life insurance, and annuities for 14 years previous to coming to PHP agency. That's a big difference. And, 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 and lots, my, my first YouTube channel started in 08, 09. And if you look back at my first videos at 08, 09, it was about selling policies, sell, 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 sell. <laughs> since, and, and since coming to PHP agency, I even looked at the industry differently when I came here to PHP. And, and when I came here to PHP agency, just seeing the values and the principles and just seeing the way we went about doing business. Again, it's something that's very, very, as much as we talk all the time, the three of us, as much as we talk all the time, it's such a, sometimes it's such, so hard to explain the culture of PHP. It's just something you just got, you just got to catch. It's something that you can't see over Zoom or even here on this podcast. You just got to come to one of our events. Speaking of which, are we not excited about our next big event, which is going to be in Vegas, Ooh. August 9th through the 12th? Are you kidding me? You know, yes, so yes. uh, we are fired and, about that. 
And you know, Matt, I forgot to mention another huge thing. It's the ownership to be with a company that's young, that's still offering ownership. I know my husband and I, we have the most shares in the company. And, uh, you know, when I saw that opportunity, I can't go to Apple and say, hey, can I get a piece of the company? I can't go to Amazon and say, hey, Bezos, can I get a piece of the company? But with Patrick Bed David and PHP, you can actually get a piece of the company. And I know that we have a huge incentive tied to big events. So I, I'm just so excited about the MGM and to know that we're putting together the greatest show the industry has ever seen. Nobody's doing what we're doing. My mom called me and she's like, I want to go to the MGM. I want to <laughs> see, she's like, <laughs> I want to see Nikki Jam. I want to go dance to Nikki Jam. I'm like, well, my parents are calling me now. <laughs> yeah, guys, we're just we're just showing the screen right now here of the uh, the Facebook cover social media graphic here, spectacular. Again, August 9th to the eleventh. I mean, look at this lineup. What I mean, uh, one of these guys by themselves is a show. It's crazy. Yes, it's crazy. We were talking about yes. the office the other day, and somebody came up and said what kind of company does an event like this? Like, <laughs> what is, oh, well, let me tell you, it's called PHP Agency. And to your point earlier, Matt, this is a big difference between anyone else out in the industry versus PHP. And, and PHP brings together this type of things, these types of, this type of talent, this type of entertainment, this type of show, because again, it's about getting people to think bigger. It's not just about insurance, right? It's about the future, you know, you can aspire to be great here in PHP. You can become great here and you have these examples here. I mean, I, I've never been a part of something ever in my life. Let me repeat that, back that up. I've never seen anything in my life that does things like this. I mean, it, it's Zero. just, and it's just crazy to me. And yet you're and in the movie world. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like, and guys, let's not, let's not forget about the travel too, because we have a trip coming up to Monaco, uh, you know, and, and another yes, trip yep. coming up in about a month to Aruba, where we get to stay at the Ritz Carlton. And we just get so spoiled here, here in PHP, you know, uh, my kids are like, we're going on vacation again. My kids are so excited, but where else can you do this? When I did loans, I was a top performer for six years. I never even got a high five. And here you're telling me, I get to travel the world. I get a piece of the company. I get to go to world-class events just for working hard. It's just, it doesn't even seem fair. And, well, and, yeah, Chris, go ahead. Sorry, Matt, as I say, and, and that goes back to your earlier point again, Matt, that Marlene just made. That's why so many people are not getting them off their bus today because they haven't been woken up yet to, to an, op they don't think an opportunity like this yet exists. And that's why the, the that's why recruiting is so important because people don't know what they don't know, and that's why the message of building and recruiting is so important because we got to go show people that this is it. This can be a reality. Like Marlene, you just said, where else can you go? Right? I mean, people just think, oh, I got to go back to school. Oh, I got to go work for someone. Else. I got to go to the job interview line again. If, if you haven't found out yet about PHP, now you know. And that's why it's so important. Yeah, I think so, this would be a good time to show the cash flow now. Well, uh, Marlene, you were, I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> Moment of truth. Right, okay. Yes. So, so we got everybody. We got this app called Bamboo. Our company just invested three million dollars to create this technology called Bamboo to help us run our business. To, I literally had somebody text me this morning. I literally just had somebody text me this morning. I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys the text. He goes, he goes, what what system? He goes, what system do you guys use? What system do you guys use to help track commissions? Because a buddy of mine has got an insurance company and he doesn't know how to do it. Wow. I said, bro, that's a benefit of PHP. You know, that's part of our 199 enrollment. <laughs> what you get for 199 bucks when you're old PHP agency? <laughs> Access to bamboo. Right. Because right. Right. Marlene, I mean, uh, thousands of agents across the country. Marlene, when's the last time you had to hire an accountant to cut your agent's commission checks? Never. I don't worry about accounting. I don't worry about payroll. I don't worry about advertising. I don't worry about anything. The only thing I worry about is developing talent and leadership. That's it. Chris, same question to you. Yeah. I, I mean, everything's done here. Administrative support, licensing support, contracting support, sales support, training support, system support, marketing support, you name it. All the things that frustrate and create headaches for business owners, all is done here. All you got to do is like Marlene said, Find, identify, and develop talent. That's all we do here. That's all we do here. Everything else happens in the background automatically. Um, my organization paid out a little over a million dollars in total commissions the first quarter 
of the year. And you know why it's so special to me, Matt? You know why it's so special, Marlene? Because that's a stimmy right there, maybe. We put a million dollars back into the economy. And you're right. We put a million dollars back into the economy. These are real hardworking that's families awesome. and people that work with us that are getting six figure incomes here with, with PHP in our organization. So if boys and girls, if you're watching this right now, there's a moment of truth. This, the, 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 does this thing really pay off? Does this whole thing about recruiting and training, developing people, does this thing really pay off? When you teach people skills, not necessarily talent? Well, let's show here. Uh, uh, Marlene, you ready? Chris, you ready? Yes. This is our income for the first 19 days of May. Three, two, one. Let's go. Who we got? What you got? What you got? Hey, look at that. Look at that. Man, Marty, you beat me by 8,000 bucks. <laughs> hey, I'm just trying to get to your guys' level. <laughs> Matt, it just, it blows me away. 115,000 the wow. first 19 days of, of the month. I mean, wh where, where could I possibly go to, to, to do this? I mean, I can't do this in real estate. I can't do this in loans, you know, and not just that, but to get paid to do something I love. I love people. I love mentoring. Uh, this is not even work for me. This is just fun for me. You Crazy. know, I want to write four more apps right now, man. Just like, you want to my apps. Guy ties are beating us. But it, by the way, that's good. Yeah, it's, it comes to be fun where it's not about, Oh man, I'm, I'm without, cause guys, if you're watching this right now, by the way, are you guys blown away by the, 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 the chat room just, just blew up. The chat box just blew up. This is really, these are real direct deposits and how much money do I have to spend on marketing and advertising and lead generation? Zero. Never Zero. spent a time on that. Never, never, never. I just wish people could go back and see us uh, uh, when we got started. I remember uh, get, uh, people say, oh, you're a good speaker. I think the first seven years I did this, I was so scared of getting on the stage. My knees would shake. I would always just just pray for like just just don't just don't make me talk don't make me talk uh, to just see how awkward we were how mechanical we were and success is just hanging on after other people let go you know but I wish there was footage so they could see you know if we can make it anybody can make it yeah you know, the craziest part we're just getting we're just getting started man we're just getting good at this thing I mean you know we are so far so far from being arrived. We are so far from just kicking back and relaxing. And uh, I think uh, if you are around people like that, that still want to be in the trenches and, and get out there and change people's lives, you got a good thing going for you if you are able to bring them into your corner. And so if you guys are watching this, if you haven't done so already, please share this on your social media. Please share this. Let everybody know about the crusade, the story, the message, and, and the mission of PHP agency, it, it, what Chris just mentioned earlier, it's more than just life insurance. It's more than just selling policy, more than just a contract level. It's uh, the whole compensation package because there's a big difference between commission level and compensation package. And if you're like that and you want somebody out there in your corner, like a Chris Philp, if you're in San Diego, make sure you follow Chris Philp on social media. And my co-host here, Marlene Gaetan, if you're in California, if you are Spanish speaking, and you would love to have somebody say, you know what, I wanted to infuse this knowledge and awareness into my community in a Spanish speaking community. Please reach out to Marlene Gaetan. So as a wrap up, last 30 seconds, Chris, any final thoughts on your end, brother? Yeah, I mean, America today is, is bound full with opportunities and we are looking for new heroes and America's looking for new heroes. Your family's looking for new heroes the country's looking for new heroes, your community, your local neighborhood. And there's a, there's a hero inside everybody. There's a hero inside everybody. And the life that every one of us wants is always going to be on the other side of the things that we don't want to do. And PHP can help you do that. PHP can give you the environment and give you the platform. It can give you the, it can give you the direction in the mentorship and the coaching and the people like you and Matt and your wife, Sheena and Jose and Marlene and Pat and Jennifer, the inspiration. And I, and I see you guys and I go, we're next, we're next. We're coming right up. We're coming right up behind you. So I thank you guys for leading the way. But if you're looking, you want to, you want to, you want to develop yourself, get the next level, grow this thing and grow this thing. There's a home for you here at PHP, but when you come here, you better come to work. Come on, come on. Marlene, final thoughts. 
Yeah, I want to just thank everybody watching the podcast, people commenting. Uh, I want you to know that we read the comments. Uh, we're very appreciative and we cannot wait to uh, have you on the podcast next and tell your PHP story here. Mary, Mary Rivera says that uh, we are heroes without a cape. Uh, SRT, draw. thank you once more for your valuable time. Mariam Philp, you know that person, Marion Philp? Somebody said somebody should run for governor. <laughs> <laughs> Angelica Alcala, great information today. Thank you. Uh, Chris Warren says, Roger that. Yes. Here's a cool comment. Nana Ose saying, so you say that for $199 in hard work, you can make $100,000? Or you can go to college for four years, pay $100,000, and not be guaranteed a job making $60,000 a year uh, salary. Interesting. So that is a question that you got to ask for yourself. Listen, the funny thing of the three of us sharing our income here, you know what? You know what's uh, interesting about that? Not a college degree between the three of us. Not a college degree between the three of us. And uh, by the way, and we're not poo pooing uh, a college because we want our kids to go to college. We want our kids to have the best access in life if that's what they choose to do. If they want that's what they want, and if they want that, we're going to give the best access best opportunities, the best door openings we can for them because by the time they make that decision, money will not be an object that keeps them from getting to the next level. And that's been your case. You've been saying, I want to live the best life, but money keeps getting me from doing that or experiencing just that. Well, reach out to us. Reach out to us. Send us a message. Uh, send Marlene Gaetan a follow and a message. Send Chris Philp a, a follow and a message. We're here to help you guys out. If we can directly help you, We'll find you somebody in the country that can help you. We have a program called the National Co Leadership Program. And the coolest thing about our National Co Leadership Program is that everybody trusts one another because we run the same system from coast to coast. And as fellow co owners, as fellow uh, 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 field leaders, we want to make sure our system is run the same way from East Coast to West Coast, North, South, because that's how we develop trust with inside our organization of over 23,000 licensed life insurance agents and PHP agencies. With that being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you follow our business page, PHP Agency. If you're following this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload and broadcast our next podcast. Every Wednesday here, week after week, every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, we do a PHP podcast. And next week will be podcast episode. Was it, Marlene? Episode... Nine. Nine. We'll be doing episode nine. Two months. So after officially today, two months of us doing this wow. podcast. Wow. Right? Two months of doing podcasts. So thanks, Chris, for being on here. And for those of you watching this, thank you so much for tuning in. With that being said, guys, I'm your Marty Smart Guy. I'm about half of Marlene Gaetan and Chris Philp. Until we meet again, continue to help people, continue to love people, and continue to change your lives today. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye, bye-bye.